Hello and welcome back to DAC with the Northern Dunedain campaign. As we jump straight into the battle we were about to do last time, I forgot, I didn't notice actually, that we only did, uh, recorded for about 27 minutes. So the video might be a bit small. For, I know that the um, part 7 was a bit small, but part 8 will be a little bit bigger to complement the lack of that. So you may be wondering, what happened to our army if you didn't watch last video? Well, what you didn't want the very end. We fought a massive battle. We lost quite a few men in the woods, which is why I don't like wooden battles whatsoever. And now this is all that's left. Our archer line suffered very few casualties. It's our front line that suffered the most. And those are the units we need to keep alive the most. Now, of course, our cavalry reduced down to only one unit out of the two that we had. It's a sad sight. That we had to depart so many from this world. That so many had to depart from this world. But still, my hatred for the orcs has not subsided. My burning blood still churns, waiting to bring these filth to their knees. <sighs> but I must be patient. I cannot bring them all down at once. I cannot hope that my, me alone will be enough to take them all down. I will brood my hatred and sustain my anger by killing the small band that still wish to roam in these lands. Soon they shall depart forever. Already their general falls. They always go for the woodland hunters. Makes it easier for them to predict. Keeping the woolen hunters to the side means they normally do a diagonal path right in front of, of our archers. And they never learn. The same technique I use every single time. Although, granted, I don't do it on purpose. Kelimeta, son of Narmasil, the second, helped by a result by by a revolt in Rovolian, Rovanian. Avenge his father with a great victory over the Easterlings upon Dagolad. I thought Kalimata was an Ardenaic name. Huh. I guess I guess I just use it for the Ardenae, the, the Ardenaim. Because it sounded better. I don't know. I don't. I don't know. It might actually be gon uh, using Gondor as well. I don't, I don't know. I haven't played Gondor, and I don't get through Dol Amroth long enough to get to other. Um, name gen to um, just captain generals and um, non law focused generals. That's it. Some orcs have already perished. My door is squeaking, which I don't like. And the rest. Yeah, more than half. Oh, there, there, there they are. So, Arendel's Star, the foreigners of Elderman Nobles. Oh, Zabug has wards, though. Oh, what the hell kind of positioning was that? Oh, whatever. If you want to get yourselves all killed, be my guest. Don't expect me to try and pick up all the pieces. Again. I've done that enough. I've done that enough. And Numenas is now... Has, now was quite a powerful garrison. But still, I'm a, I'm displeased. Deadman's Dyke no longer belongs... Is no longer somewhere we can take. I waited too long. I took too long to do the thing I needed to do. And that fate wounds me forever. But it doesn't mean I that doesn't mean it should stop me. If anything, it means the dead man's dike will be fully ready to be claimed for when it, the time is right. Your orders. Yes. And maybe I can make that day sooner. I shall no, 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 that's order. stupid. Right now, so trying to Use a diplomat to claim Fornos is stupid. If I can have the, the, the Brelanders fight on my behalf against Angmar in the north, will I start taking um, Camoth Brynn and then even move into Goblin Town if I must to stop the goblins once and for all, then so be it. But I cannot let the elves suffer any more than what they've already suffered. Erendil's star will not fall to orc filth ever again. That I swear. Also, Koloniak, which I already mentioned a few times in the past, is still neutral. 
and a land we might take to aid us against Dunland when the time comes. But the, the only reason I'm so hot, hesitant, hesitant to attack is because the Brelanders are not at war with Dunland yet. It will happen. It will always happen. At turn 50, it will always happen. Until that time, I'm eager to keep peace with Dunland. Because it means I can focus on my true enemy. And then when they start weakening, I can start bre breaking down the strength of Dunland. Because unfortunately, Dunland holds a very powerful key against us that we need to break. If we hope to keep our gates closed and sealed and safe, and our people safe. Uh, end the turn. Turn 40. Part 8, and we're only 40 turns in. I am actually ecstatic for how this campaign's going to go. So I don't I don't remember very well, but I remember Linden not to, uh, I remember Linden we got to about killing Bree by about this point. With Erebor, we were getting close to defeating... Um, no, we got close to him in da taking Dane's Halls. We were halfway through... Um, just doing a lot of different things with Erebor. It was a bit weird. Not, not, not gonna lie, er Erebor was the weird faction that I played as. But it was just a, it was just a fun one time. Oh, half the army of Dead Man's Dyke's gone. Oh no, 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 no. Oh, they're under siege. Oh sh shoot! I just farted. <laughs> I can't hide my shame. I just farted. Are they still besieging? Of course not. They'd be stupid to continue their siege like that. And I have no need to continue worrying about them. And they instantly lost Holland. So I just got 10,000 gold. Destroyed that. Well, at least I got rid of this re uh, region from being a threat to our ally. Because they've lost a lot of ways to get new troops. However, I must now focus upon the land that I govern. That I protect. And that will include Dead Man's Dyke soon enough. I feel. I fear, even. That is true. Next turn, I'll have another chunk of an army join my side. And some more units coming from our soul, too. We're not making any money, but because of how much we have, we're not losing anything, either. Metaphorically speaking, we are literally we are literally losing coin out of our pockets and i'm about to triple that amount in a few turns time but it is a necessary evil that i commit here letting the orcs do what they wish to the elves for now just so i can claim a land that doesn't truly belong to me yet but it should the brelanders war is not in the north it's in the south I do not wish harm upon them, but I cannot guarantee their safety if they keep being so reckless. The garrison of Numenas must not change. It can only grow in strength. It cannot leave yet. Not until I have Dead Man's Dyke. If I don't, then I leave the Numenas vulnerable. And that is another reason I refuse to lose. Because when the barracks event comes around, our best troops will be recruited from there. And it doesn't matter where else we, we can get new troops from. Our best troops are in the two capitals, Fornos and Anuminas, and the two regions above them, Baridon, Iraq, and Barketa. No other region matters more than them. No other region will matter more than them. And I plan to keep it that way. How are things looking? They held them back. I'm actually, I'm actually happy. It means I can actually go and enjoy myself up in the north a bit. Yes, my lord. My units are gravely wounded and need healing. My lord. For now, I have to keep hoping that, they'll, that uh, what I have doesn't need healing. And we'll be fine. And let's move out these troops and the lumbermen. We need more infantry. Let's move them out. Yeah, we're now losing over 700 a turn. Not good. Not good news. I'm actually going to do something with Aragorn. I'm going to do his main quest. I'm going to start his main quest because it takes because the the path we're about to take will take us there. Now 
No, Osnethiel has fallen again. And I guess I have no time for, for enjoying a little trip to Bree. Not yet. Shame. I was really hoping to get some nice mead from there. Might bring the troops a bit of morale too. Oh well. Have a spy go down and have a look. Meanwhile, Cardlani, Dunedain, and Scouts join Aragorn as, as well. We now lose al almost a thousand a turn. But once again, we're about to make so much money, it's not it's not worth worrying about it. Yes, my lord. Pillamore, return to the elf side. You need they need you again. I just left my diplomat here for God knows how long. Halvin, I'm sorry. Telkar, come on. We're, we're both honourable people here. I guess not. Farewell. Dale, we already have an alliance with you. Well, we already have trade with you, so there's no point in continuing conversation with you for now. Let's move to Dorwinian and Rune. Be careful, Prince Elro here. Your life is not worth throwing away. Yes, my lord. The garrison of Ostal still stands strong. Wow, that was a soliloquy and a half. I, I don't, I don't know what it was. Ugh, it was a sentence and a half, is what it was. But I was trying to think of a proper word, the proper wording for it. Uh, uh. No quarters growing, we might as well build the library then. Because at one point, uh, one way or another, Meluvian's rest will become Meluvian's wrath. Maybe not. I'm not I don't plan to re rename it. But the orcs are still striking. They're tenacious, I'll give them that. But they must stop now. Otherwise, I will be have no choice but to force my hand further. And I'm sure that would be a destiny they would far fear worse than death. Them continuing a constant struggle which they cannot win. Oh well. You think they you think they'd have learnt after I killed off now two of their factioners and their faction leader? They never learn. Even with only three reasons remaining, they've now oh Carandras has fallen. Not good. Not good at all. Hostilities between Do the Khazadum and Dogador have ceased, which means they now have their entire focus upon the, the goblins. Seems the time is now, don't you think? Guess another smoking house. Anumnas has the council hall, council hall so we can have more free upkeep. And I think it's time we get the Dunedain armory too. We lose a bit more money for the, the cost of troops. But it's worth it. Now then, Himian. Drunk of Aragorn again. We have near a full stack now. Before we didn't even have a we had half a stack and then about a, a three quarter stack. Now we have a, a near full stack on our team. And soon we'll be aided by even more Dunedain. More more Cardellani, more Dunedain. They don't stand a chance. The enemy has made a great, great mistake. They keep pushing back when they should just surrender. I, I think I'm about to realise what it means to give up. Or to lose. Because Athanusia comes. And Halbarad and Hervigil have long have long sat here doing nothing. That time will soon change. And I fear it may not end well. But I must persevere, I must remain confident that what I do is right. I will reclaim these lands for my elven brethren. I will reclaim Osnethiel, I will reclaim Anon Enerod. But then I will not stop there. For too long have I been too... Believing that if I was to take Bagdad Man's Dike, it would do anything. I've been back and forth saying, yes, it might help if I take it back, but I kind of want the Breelanders to aid me. I'm constantly back and forth. I want the, I want the Breelanders to help, but not at si uh, sacrificing innocent lives. 
The second they do that, the second I ask them to relieve themselves of their duty as, tr as wardens of the north we must make a stand. in holding Denland's Dyke, they besiege me out of Numinas with a very mediocre army to my knowledge, although I fear for the worst. That his army is worse than mediocre. We shall engage. Snow Orcs. Other than their general and those Snow Orcs, they have nothing. I relish this battle with anticipation. But I should not build that building knowing that I might not come back from this. There's likely we lose a Numinas as well. And again, another sacrifice we must make for the greater good. And a painful one that will scold me forever. The Dunlings come back with their chieftain Yagfak, leading the charge against Kaloniak Garrison. What defends us in their field this time? They don't learn. They never learn. Scouts, riders, make a vanguard. Claim what's in their field for me. Aragorn, move out for Amon Enerod. If this must be done myself, then so be it. But I will not. I will not tolerate leaving such filth in the wake of such a beautiful region. Lumberman, it's time you move out too. For the fort. For now, moving out is pointless. Will they fight me now? Or will they wait like the cowards they are? If, they w if I must wait any longer, I fear for the worst. A Numinas cannot stand if it does not have someone w willing to defend it. And the more numbers we lose, the more willing men, the more arms, the more spears and bows that cannot be held in defiance of Angmar. We cannot lose a Numinas. And I will not suffer a defeat there. This an oath I swear. Under pain of death. The infantry is many. They have only one siege tower and two rams. There's no point in thinking I can defeat them with power alone. Strategy and cunning will win me this war. As it has been so far. This land is not yours to take. Afunazir. Go back to your master while you can and tell him you have failed. Before death beseech you. The storm gathers. Our enemies gather. Soul swords. Since when do they have soul swords? I didn't see any soul swords. The battle seems to be out of my favour. Out of my depth. A trivial matter. I don't believe that such a thing would exist. This battle is far from over. Scouts, hold the front. Dunedain, I want you to retreat back to here. Rangers, stand proud upon the walls while you can. Soon we must soon we must flee from them. Stand tall in defiance of shadow. Wardens move back. You're gonna be the key pin of our victory. If I don't break the game. Well, I just made the game crash. No, I didn't. Okay, thank god. Well this, this gate this battle might make the game crash, which I won't like very much. Begin. I'll exercise every trick in the book if I must, if it means victory. 
It's no longer the first target. Bring them down. Hervigil, you know your target. The Witch Knights. Do not, do not stay for long. For soon the wall will not be ours. We must be ready to retreat when the time comes. Once the battering ram hits the gate, and once the siege tower hits the walls, we must flee if we want to survive. Scouts, move out from the gate. Buy us some time if you can. Now, Halbarad, which knights hit them? Never again will the land of my people fall into enemy hands. That's right, Boromir. I mean, Halbarad. I mean, whoever said that. Those snow orcs. Dinadane, it is time you flee. Go now. Hervigil. Halbarad. It's a little longer. One more volley. Now flee. Run while you can. All of you, flee. Come on, run. Why are you standing still doing nothing when you should be fleeing for your lives? The scouts will hold them. You must flee, all of you. To the centre. Go to the Wardens. Why do you still tarry? And why do you not know skirmish mode when I press skirmish mode? They hide the witch knights well inside their savages. They will cut down all the savages first. They're weaker armoured anyway. The walls are lost. But we will not give up the bridge yet. Now, Wardens. Before they get through the gate, before they start coming down the walls, I want everyone to volley. The scouts will keep buying time. It's the best they can do. They're no use in cramped so a cramped city like this. Let's only slow them down and slow us down in turn. It's best they remain out here and cut down the enemy ranks from within before they even get to touch the gate or assail the walls. If worse comes to worse, it will come to a timer, in which case I will win. Cut down any that would protect their general. They protect him with blind loyalty. A trait that is very feared amongst the people of the Dunedain. Where they have Angrim that are willing to sacrifice everything. No. Halt. Halt your volleys. Halt your fire. And just wait until they are down the, down the walls and through the gate. Anything else? And you will die. Strike down the the, then the trash. The more of them we can kill, the less of them will be around to the the, the less of them will, the fewer of them will be around to cover um, their general from arrow fire. Keep running, keep running. Buy as much time as you can. And if possible, try not to die too much. No, I know that's inescapable. The battle is very much in our face. Victory will be ours. Just kill as many as you can. Don't scatter. If you scatter, you die. But keep make sure they remain scattered. Oh, there's a pikeman. Let's, keep, uh, yeah, let, let's not worry about those pikemen. Those sellswords, though, need to be dealt. Some, need, need to be need to learn some manners. Like 
moving a, moving siege towers up to the wall and not even fighting back. Not even claiming the wall. I did nothing to them. That is not good. This just shows the, in, the superior power of the root of the, these hillmen compared to the compared to what I was fighting earlier. Did I build, bug the game? Because they haven't actually come for the walls yet. Or is it just because I've got these guys still alive? They haven't got they haven't actually moved forward yet. The best way to win this is a very cheesy tactic. Which I've just which I've mentioned several times already. This way, this here is the perfect choke point. Only one thing can come through and back, whoever holds it. And I've glitched the enemy, so I can't even get to show you that fun technique. Damn it! Well, I'm just going to, um... Huh. I don't actually know what I'm going to do. Okay, this is, this is going to be the first video I need to actually edit before I he um, finish up for the day. So I'm going to wait until it's over. And then show you what happens. Because I'm fairly it's going to be terrible no matter what happens. In fact, no, no, no. No, no, no. I'm not the per I'm not this kind of person. Hervigil, you're small enough of a unit that you can just come through. You need to go in one at a time. If, if you fire with too much all at once, we're likely to make mistakes. And you want one unit at a time to shoot them. To provoke them to attack us. And if they don't attack us, then we'll just kill them even more. Ah, oh, damn mouse. Zoom out. Zoom out. What the hell was that? And I did not give you permission to do weird things. Where are they? They're not even on the wall yet. They're not even on the wall yet. Come on. Yeah, I can't believe I glitched them out this badly. This this is a um, a top tier glitch. I'm not gonna, not gonna lie. I'm kind of glad, but I'm disappointed because I actually had a plan. I had a plan to actually win this game, but nope. The game just has to ruin it for me. Damn it, game ruining my fun. Mm -hmm. Angry face. Now we may have lost all the scouts, and they're not coming back. Because this, this is not, not this will not be a victory. Because we can't. We, there's no way I'm moving out to try and kill them all. Hand to hand, they're kicking my ass. Yeah, kick for kick, they're kicking my ass. But if I'm smart, and these guys don't do half volley fires, we stand a chance of killing them, most of them. And then when they try and attack us, they might decide to retreat instead. Unless they get reinforcements. But let, 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 let's not worry about that possibility. Because it won't happen. It will not happen. That's right, Boromir. You tell them. Okay, Hervigil's all used up. Harbarad, you're next. You're the only one that I feel like is worth still shooting with. They're not actually garrisoning this anymore, are they? No. I think attacking from here is better. So at least from here, we have a vantage point. We have a um, a clear shot. Where here is a bit of a, a bit of a scoop shot. You don't know what you're going to hit, but you hope you hit something good. I probably should have done it with Hervigil first. Oh well. Oh well. It's a shame these towers don't actually fire back. That'd be very useful. Or do they? No, oh, that's not something I actually thought about. Can these can those towers shoot back? Whatever. We kill their general, then we might stand a chance of actually just charging in and killing them. But oh, no, I'm not gonna I'm never gonna do that. I'm not stupid enough to do that. In fact I want Harbour to hit these soul swords instead. Because they're just as big as a threat as the Witch Knights, if not even bigger for the fact they're still a whole tit they're whole they're still a whole unit. And my arrows are armor piercing, which is why I'm doing so much damage to them. But I don't think they're body piercing. No, they're not body piercing. Only elves get the luxury of body piercing arrows. Now look how many savages die to protect those witch knights. And we just killed 40, 50 soul swords with a few volleys from our steel bowmen. 
And look at that. Every volley is killing a witch knight. At least a witch knight. I would say it's too gruesome to watch, but I'm loving this. <laughs> Hope you guys are too. But yeah, this is probably going to be the entire, um, the entirety of this video because God damn, I was not expecting the game to glitch. I know the game, the battle was going to last for some, sometime around this, around this time, around, around about this much time. But I wasn't expecting it to glitch out, so they wouldn't even attack. I knew I was going to do something when I sent out the scouts, but I didn't know they would just do, re refuse to do anything. It's disrespectful. It's, just, it's disrespectful to my enemy that they still refuse to do anything. It is honestly disrespectful. They don't. They refuse to do anything. Okay, Dunedain, I want you to, to hit, not hit the um, the elites. I just want you to cut everything down. Because again, for those of you that don't know, when you get a draw, no casualties are replenished, no lives are saved. The dead remain dead. Those that fell do not come back. So whatever we kill here, I kill knowing that there's then there's no chance of them coming back. I also know I lost the Arnor scout, the Dunedain scouts in the process. In a way, it's money earned. Because of what the wounds have had, the wounds they've suffered, or the sacrifices they've made, was worth it. Because in, 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 in full honesty. They're the reason this sit uh, Numina still stands right now. If I didn't move them out, they wouldn't have saved this region and we'd have lost it. So tonight the drinks, what left, what little we have left, go to them. In remembrance of those that uh, sacrificed their lives so that the rest of us could be saved. Another day. Bro, our quivers are almost empty. Our bloodlust has almost subsided. And so is our enemies, and apparently they don't know how, they don't know how to use siege equipment. Apparently they're that primitive. But which knights down to twenty? They're bound to replenish. That's why I don't want to focus them anymore. There's no point. There's no point in killing an, a unit that's going to die. Well, that's that's just going to come back anyway. It's best to leave them for the, when the battle really gets to a turning point. But yeah, they're not doing anything. And even if they did get to do something now, it'd be too late. They would never get through. Even one unit of Dunedain Wardens completely protecting the the, um, the bridge. They would never get through. Today is ours, but it was not it was not won. It wasn't deserved either. It was sacrificed. This victory was sacrificed. Let's kill those cell swords off. I pity looking at those sorry fools. I'd happily, I'd happily sacrifice their own honor just to serve orcs and evil men. Yep, the battle's almost over. My arrows are almost completely empty. My quivers have been emptied of all arrows. And in two minutes' time, the battle will be over. Well, faster than two minutes since I'm fast-forwarding it, but you get, you get the point. Try killing everything you can, people. You haven't got much time left. Killing those cell swords is going to be a massive advantage. The day is over and we are victorious. Nope, we just get a heroic victory. Neat, because we killed 939. We have nothing but our archers and Dunedain scouts. Are they there? Yes, they are. They kill more than anyone. 296 kills. Their names will be sung long for the world to remember. Oh, there's Melkor with um, being brought to sleep by Melian. And then, um, don't remember the name of the wolf. I know Glaurong. No, not Glaurong. That's, um, I'm trying to think. There was a great black wolf and then there was a uh, Karkaroth. Karkaroth and then the, the hound that killed him, Huon. The Hound of... Um, I was going to say Orion. I play too much Warhammer. The Hound of... Um, the God of the Hunt. Um, Ose? Not Ose. Um, Arome? No, 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 no. Well, you get, you, you, get the, you get the picture. The Hound of a God that said it could only be... That said his only... That said um, the Black Hound could only be killed by one oh, thing. Honor. 
Yep, there they are, all the way fleeing their tail between their legs to the Numenorean superiority. And once again, the, the attackers of Barquetta fail and Rune expands. That is ill tidings. Ill tidings indeed. Yes, as we did. Dale and Rune are at war now. Not surprising. I'm surprised they weren't already at war. In fact, they were to begin with. They must have had peace and then so on and so on. Library and Malu Maluvian's rest. We're losing a lot of money. We're losing over a, fa a thousand a turn now. Defending, defending a Numenas would cost us grit. They survived. I can't. I can't continue their suffer. I can't let them continue to suffer like this. But I need them. They fought honorably, and that, that honor is what I need to win. So before we end this, we'll reclaim Martinethiel. We don't need to worry about orcs. Trust me. Orcs are the least of our worries. <coughs> oh. How long have I been recording for? Nearly four hours. Yeah. I've been recording for four hours straight now. Well, near... Well, three and a half hours straight nearly. And it's... Yeah, this is, this will be the last video for today. So we'll take Austin Ethiel. We'll give it over to the, Im the Elves of Imladris. And we even get to fa uh, fight on Austin Ethiel now. Neat. So this is what Austin Ethiel looks like, boys and girls. Men and women of all ages. The, all the, are the orcs brave enough to come up towards us? Do they think they have that much of a chance against us or not? I can't tell. They're too far away. Let's come to them. Seeing this, saying they're arrogantly behind. We'll carve away through them if we must. They're nothing but snugger, and snugger only know one thing fear. Because they are the slave caste of the orcs. That's right, come for me, you cowardly bastards. Come and get me. Ah, uh -uh, come and get me. Perhaps they knew their end was near already. They don't even wish to fight back. Oh, here they come. Here they come. Run away. Not a single casualty. That is what you call perfect precision striking. That is beautiful. That was, that was perfectly done. Well done, Dunedain. Well done. Not a single casualty to our names. We've already killed 20% of their army. That's what I like to see. Perfect results. Although we are slightly winded now from all the moving we've done. Fall back. We ran out of ammunition. Run through them. Run them through. Our casualties are meaningless. We fight to protect the elven lands. That they have. That they definitely have. Now the stalkers I've been hiding so casually up on the hill. You're next. And I can't zoom out. So I can't. Come on. Zoom. Zoom you fool. Ugh. That's right. Move out from the, te from the protection of your city. You don't need it. These orcs died honourable deaths. It took of them many a soul. Let it be known that they fought hard. This was not no heroic victory. If anything, it was a pyrrhic victory. We suffered far too many losses that we should than we should have. But of course. Splitting up the army meant we could take Osinethiel and then move to Anon Enerod at the same time. Our cause was just. Just for what, though? That's the better question. We 
suffered several casualties in our cavalry here today. But more than enough still to fight off any orc that thinks it can come against us. We are now ready. This was, this was just an exhibition of strength. There were still some dissenters of the Dunedain that didn't know that they could fight back against the, the orcs. May this prove all of them wrong. And now once again. Pelennor. Glorfindel has come. Then why have I not got Gandalf? You son of a bitch. With Glorfindel's coming. It just means. Yeah the orcs don't stand a chance anymore. The orcs are done. How could an honor and, a pleasure. and now they get a garrison of three more elder and Wayne nobles. <laughs> let's pull this shit out. <laughs> We're going to win. Oh, let's go for Anon Enerod. And by the time we take it, by well, the time we get to take it, we've already had our, uh, we'll already have our Captain Himdir aiding us. As I said earlier today, most likely in this video as well, I'm not satisfied with just taking out what we did before and then going back to try and do some other things. No, 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 no. This time it's personal. We must build this garrison if we hope to protect our people more in the future. We'll soon get more Dunedain upon us. This war is only reaching its apex. The Angrim, the Angrim dogs have breathed, uh, breathed their last. Time we start getting the chickens. For victory is upon us. So I hope you've all enjoyed this part. Very um <laughs> boisterous. And another reminder, Glorfindel has come. Which means I'm fairly certain once it hits turn fifty, we get the light of our own. Gandalf will be here. But then at the same time, Dunlan will come to war with us too. So our focus will be even more split than ever. Although Angmar is not so much of a threat right now. For as long as Bree remains on Denman's Dyke, we have a chance. We have a real chance to win this war and then truly move out. But again, even through all of this, I must reclaim Denman's Dyke one day. And if they take it, buy a Doniarak. I guess I don't really need to take these two regions. It just means I get to make more of my Arthurdain units. I rather just want Anuminas and Deman's Dyke. Those are the only two units I, the only two be regions I want without a doubt. But until next time, I hope you have all enjoyed this part, and I will be recording five more episodes tomorrow. Oh, part eight. So we've done four, five, six, seven, and eight today. Five videos. So much has happened. Let, let me just recap on everything that's happened today. <laughs> Before we finish, because I feel like it's it's deserving of it. So so when, when I started today, we had only just defeated the generals of the faction leader, faction heir of the goblins. We moved out to take Ottenethiel. We took it. Then we gave it over. Then we defended it a bit more. Uh, Anuminas was in no real trouble at all. Demons like was still under control of rebels, but then it was claimed. And then Erendil's star, which was once called. Um, Bruinost fell. Elrond died. But then we reclaimed it and renamed it Erendil's Star. And then the Elden Ring nobles came to the rescue. And now the world will tremble upon the elves once more. For they have come. And they will suffer no rival. And neither shall I. As we fight as one. Elves and men once together can never be separated. So I hope you've all enjoyed that little part if you ever, ever actually got this far. <laughs> uh, next time we'll be taking Anon Enerod. And we may even be so... Um, um, we might even try and take Kazadun West. And if we do, I'll send a diplomat. I'll send my diplomat to Pillamor to give Kazadun West to Kazadun. And I'll ask for more than just with the money I've been... Oh, just find my mic. 
I'll ask more than just the money that I've been get, get asking for in Lardris. 10,000 10, is not enough to claim a second part of a land which can hold Mithril. No, no, no. Kazadoom is belonging to a much greater desire. And I will make sure I get my fair share of the, of the riches from giving it to the dwarves. Trust me, no dwarf will, stoop, will scoop me out. But until next time, I hope you've all enjoyed. And I'll see you all next time. Ta-ta for now.